monogenic diabetes it's less discussed about this uh, my interest with monogenic diabetes started during my dm days and uh, so as we uh, all know many times monogenic diabetes is a clinically heterogeneous group of disorder characterized by non ketotic diabetes mellitus an autosomal dominant mode of inheritance and onset usually before 25 years of age and frequently and the primary defect is in the function of beta cell so this this is the first case which i came across during my residency days and this was a 23 year male he was resident uh, near lucknow only uh, he was a set top box mechanic and he was a person with i'll say good iq and he was a smart guy and he he was a known case of diabetes for last one year which was detected when he uh, had a wound following road traffic accident and which was not healing and he came to us with complaint of dimness of vision gradually in both eye over one month at the start he noticed that he could not see distant object but presently he can perceive only hand movement he cannot read he had history of floaters in front of eye he could not see uh, the ce uh, central field of vision but can see in the periphery he had an interesting family history and that is this is the key if suppose we want to diagnose monogenic diabetes it is very important to spend time discussing about the family history and there was he gave history of uh, individuals in the family having diabetes who were lean and the onset was before 20 years and this was the family tree in fact individuals in the family who were of 5 uh, years so he had a glucometer at home and he was testing sugar of each and every person in the family even uh, individuals from the next generation kids of 5 6 years they were having diabetes and uh, he he was just doing the testing of all the family members because he was finding every day he was finding a new new cases so his blood pressure was 120 by 78 his bmi was 18.9 his uh, waist hip ratio was 0.89 uh, there was a thyromegaly test all examination there was no feature suggestive of malabsorption there was ulceration on the uh, on the leg also there was a he the vision was improved this was his uh, fundus photograph and if we see the uh, there was gross retinal detachment and there was areas of hemorrhage bleeding and atherosclerotic vessels could be seen even there was a fibrotic tissue can also be seen this was his investigation and it was all absolutely absolutely none, none of them was unremarkable there was uh, unremarkable and his a1c was 7.3 thyroid function was normal in spite of uh, he, he having thyromegaly so then at the rounds with uh, we had discussion with our professor bhatia sir and sir told uh, we had a discussion that this could be uh, a case of modi and he was having proliferative diabetic neuropathy sensory neuropathy and diabetic foot ulcer and youth thyroid goiter this uh, this was a case which we had seen in 2011 uh, 12 then we were not very much aware of this genetic testing facility at cmc velour and the gene testing was not done but later on we had we came across a similar case uh, who had uh, retinopathy diabetes and strong family history and in that case we could find a mutation of cell gene now uh, this is this is again interesting case this was a 37 year old businessman uh, he was a known case of diabetes for 19 years and his, he came to us with poor glycemic control of blood sugar of 156 and post prandial 280 he was taking cetagliptin metformin caraglifosin and pioglitazone so four oral anti diabetic agents but there was no sulfonylurea there and he was an ex exercise enthusiastic guy he was exercising one and a half hours he was uh, running at the speed of 10 to 12 km per hour on the treadmill and he was worried in spite of all this effort his sugars were not well controlled 
and this was his, again his family tree but it is very important many times patient might give uh, history very vaguely but uh, uh, on careful follow up what we found is that there was uh, there was diabetes there in a lot of individual in the family in fact we did the gene testing for this patient he came out to positive and his daughter was a carrier for the gene and there was the diabetes involving even a uh, four generation most important thing in the examination if we are suspecting monogenital diabetes there should be no signs there is usually no signs of insulin resistance and here there was no acanthosis nigricans so this was a clue so we we suspected monogenic diabetes in this patient and what we did is as he was living very near to the clinic what we asked him to do uh, take glimepride 3 mg and come after 3 uh, 4 days and uh, we asked him if there is any problem you can come come any of the days and fortunately what happened his sugar was very well controlled on just uh, giving one oha and the, all the four drugs were withdrawn then uh, and this uh, gene testing was sent to uh, cmc villor and it it came out to be positive in fact uh, uh, the one of the daughter she was a ca carrier for the gene and the oggt of this uh, uh, patient the, the daughter it also was impaired while the blood sugar was normal in the other daughter who was not the carrier and one interesting thing which uh, we all expect as happens in this hnf modi there is usually the insulin secretory defect so the fasting sugar can remain normal but the post prandial sugars can be high so usually the in gck modi we will see fasting hyperglycemia while in hnf 4 alpha and 1 alpha there can be there, there is usually secretory defect and we might have just post prandial hyperglycemia the fasting might remain normal so this paper uh, this case was presented in uh, esd 2017 by a group now again uh, this was an again an interesting case this was a, a 52 year gentleman when he came first to the op he said he is having diabetes for last 17 years and he was diagnosed at the age of 35 his bmi was 25 and he was taking premix insulin uh, twice a day and he was also taking vildagliptin once a day for 5 years and his a fasting was 158 post mandel 301 a1c was 8.6 he was fed up of insulin and he said is there any way we can stop the insulin while taking the family history what we found is that His parents were having. Uh, his father was having diabetes, and uh, and the, all the family members were lean, and he, his BMI was also not very high, twenty five. Uh, considering this fact that he uh, there was an autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance, uh, we sent the uh, gene testing. Uh, and uh, when the gene testing came came out to be positive he then said he was having diabetes at very young age at 22 23 so many times patient might give a casual history that he is having diabetes for last 10 15 years but it can be actually more but till the time we were waiting for gene testing he was given uh, regular insulin and glargin insulin twice a day and vildagliptin was continued Uh, as the gene testing came out to be a novel hnf4 alpha gene variant and this was absent in the exon aggregation consortium then the insulin was stopped to this patient he was given glycoside 90 mg metformin and sitagliptin twice a day is uh, on follow up his fasting was 124 and post mandel was 145 and a1c was 7.3 and this defect was found to be likely pathogenic so the final diagnosis for this patient was a modi type 1 with fair glycemic and there was no features of ma macro or microvascular complication the three daughters they the ogdt done for them it came out to be normal and uh, unfortunately this person he has not uh, sent the genes sample for the daughters so the learning from this case was that it was a novel variant of modi type 
it also gives us a learning that in our part of world where modi testing modi is diagnosed infrequently we should still keep it in dds in older individual with diabetes and our case again we reiterates that modi type 1 it is sensitive to sulfonylurea and other classes of medication and diagnosis can help in treatment prognosis and genetic counseling we presented this paper in rsgi upcon now uh, what about we have sent a lot of sample to uh, cmc velor and in 2008 we analyzed our cases which uh, we had sent to velor and what we saw is that these are the total cases which we have sent uh, to, to velor what the, although we have not published this paper uh, in 2018 we had this thing in our mind that the gene uh, there is a calculator for modi uh, prediction by exeter university uk and we believe because the uh, the bmi range is different for indians as compared to caucasians and there are other factors that's why we believe that the calculator is not very useful in our setting so total this was analyzed in 2018 what we saw is that total 26 blood samples were sent of which 20 was index cases and 6 were of relatives and uh, what was seen is that of this the uh, 26 gene uh, testing reports was positive and a lot uh, 14 were not having diabetes and then we learned a new term called as modi x many of the individuals who might uh, clinically satisfy the criteria for monogenic diabetes there would be they would be lean there would be sign uh, there won't be any sign of uh, insulin resistance and they might respond to sulfonylurea uh, there would be autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance they might have young onset diabetic but still the gene testing can uh, remain negative and what is happening is that every 2 3 years we are we are having one new gene uh, involvement for uh, diabetes so we see there was 26 cases 20 index case of which uh, uh five was positive there was this paper from a uh, uh, uk group what they showed is that for every six sample sent for genetic testing uh one came out to be positive and uh, in our set, setting where is the, where there is a big financial constraint many a times uh what we found is that one out of uh, Uh, one in three cases it time one in three times it was positive now uh, we have a series of around 13 cases of monogenic diabetes uh, including uh, hnf4 alpha hnf1 uh, alpha then blk uh, uh, there is a, this patient who is having blk and hnf1 beta mutation positive recently we had this patient with pdx positive we have two cases of hnf1 beta then two cases of cell gene mutation this uh, this case uh, this which which was discussed in the previous talks also if suppose we find non ketotic type 1 diabetes uh, and antibodies are negative one should then go on for genetic testing they might have genes uh, positive for monogenic diabetes and this patient was again the 10th case was a case uh, who was diagnosed diabetes at 18 years of age she gave a vague history that she was not gaining the weight that's why the sugars were done and she came out to positive she never had ketosis at the age of 45 she presented to us we did the antibodies for her and it came out to be negative then we sent the sample for genetic testing and it came out to be uh, positive for pax mutation we have a presentation of this case series uh, in uh, the annual conference of uh, endocrine society of australia and new zealand Endo uh, endocrine society so i think it uh, it's uh, important to diagnose monogenic diabetes because it might change the prognosis of of the patient the management would differ and we can prognosticate our patients well 
So uh, my acknowledgement to the Molecular Endocrinology Laboratory, CMC Velour, they have been of great help during this journey. They, uh, they were always of great support. And acknowledgement to my fellow colleagues who have also contributed to cases and the educators who work in our clinic who helped in compiling this data. Thank you. Over to the organizers.